Hi everyone, Rosa here. Um, today I wanted to do a um, different type of video. Um, for now I'm calling it Intro into Planning. Um, with the new year coming up and uh, a lot of people choosing um, their uh, planners for next year or trying to um, decide on new planners, staying with the same ones. Um, it can give a lot of stress and anxiety for a lot of people. Um, with this video, or I don't know, I may make more of them, um, I would like to sort of break down um, why and um, stuff like that. Um, when I talk to people, one of the first questions that they often ask is um, Why do I plan? Why do I plan the way that I do? Um, well, the easy answer for me, at least, is that I use my planner as a sort of um, an external brain. Anything I write into my planner, I don't actually have to remember myself. Which, you know, um, a lot of people who have ADHD, autism or other um, neuro or neurological or um, mental health related issues or even just really stressed we know how easy it is to forget things so I use my planner to um, sort of externalize my brain so I don't have to remember everything myself the second question is often how do you plan Well, sort of, you know, you do you. Not everybody's planning is the same. And my planning from two years ago is very different from the type of planning I was doing earlier this year, or even the type of planning I do now. So there's no one answer to how, not even, you know, what type of system should someone says should someone use? Um, I don't really connect with doing digital, but I know a lot of people who do digital systems. Others use um, paper systems. And some use whiteboards. The, the important part is not the type of system you're using, it's that you use the actual system that you choose. Um, connected to this is what are the tools that you need for um, something? Well, that totally depends on your system. You don't need stickers, you don't need color coding, um, you don't need paper, or well, you don't need digital, you don't need a whiteboard, you don't, you know, nothing of that is needed. These are all questions that are, you know, you need to answer it for yourself. I would like to offer three key components. to any um, system that you start using or that you can come up with. One is that you need to trust your system. Trusting your system is very important because if you don't trust your system, you won't use it. Two, you need a habit. You need to use your system as a habit, even if it's just once a week. But keep the habit of using your system once a week going. Three, 
you need to adapt. Both in really small senses, but also in the larger scheme of things. Adaptation of your system will become really important as you keep progressing with it. You need to trust your system. This is not just important for um, people with um, memory or time or any other um, even executive functioning issues, but this is important for everyone. I use my uh, planner as a, an extension of my brain. I don't fully trust my own brain to remember everything that I need to do. Why? Because I know from experience that I'll forget things. Or I'll put things off because I'll think, well, the deadline's only four weeks away and it's four days later. Um, things like that. I use my system uh, to get a grip on those kind of things and um, to be able to use it as a brain extension, as um, a place to collect things, you're gonna have to trust that you're actually putting everything into your planner. That you're not going, oh, I'll remember that, you know, two weeks from now, I'll have this appointment and um, I don't need to write it down, I'll, you know, I'll remember it. But if you can't, if you don't put everything in, you can't trust your brain or you can't trust your planner to actually know when things are coming up. And if you can't trust your planner, then, you know, how are you gonna trust using it? This is a two-way street. If you're not putting anything into your planner, you're not gonna get anything out of your planner because it's not there. So the third part of this is to actually use your planner. And this doesn't have to be daily use. This can be weekly use. This can be, you know, system on a whiteboard, things like that. It, it doesn't mean you have to use it every day, but you have to use it in the way that it's meant to be used. If you're putting your appointments on there, then you're going to have, you're going to need a way to track when appointments are, but also what the date is right now. Because the, like I said, if I feel like a deadline's four weeks away, but it's only four days away, I won't know that unless I know what the date today is and what date the actual deadline is. Without both of these, I won't know when those things happen. So you need to use your planner. You need to put things into your planner to be able to get them out. The second thing of this is habit building. And I'm not talking drink enough water on a day or go for a run each day. I'm talking the habit of using your planner. Of um, If you trust your planner to be doing your work, then using your planner will have to be a habit and will become a habit at some point. It doesn't have to be big. It can start small. I'm not saying start putting everything into your planner. It's what I did when I first started bullet journaling. Um, I made in I had my brand new notebook and I made I think 10 to 15 different idea spreads. I used I think two of them in total. I set them all up. I was thinking big and bold ideas and in the end I started using two of them and most of those I actually kept using while I was using my uh, bullet journal and have by and large moved to my other journals with me. Your second part of habit building is that you need to know what are you tracking? Are you doing time tracking? Are you tracking your appointments? Are you tracking your work schedules? Anything time related? Um, is that going to be your main focus? If so, start your habit there. Start keeping track of where you are, when you're there, keeping track of any um, uh, travel times, things like that. 
it gives you a really quick grip on your um, uh, on your days and your weeks. If you want to do anything else, sure, but start here. Start with your time tracking. That's your most important reason that you're going into planning is because you need to keep you need to get a grasp on your time. Start with small time tracking. Um, if you watch my plan with me videos, um, I use quite an elaborate um, version of that, but it's still the same idea and um, I'll try to link it in the description and hopefully in the video itself so you can actually see how I do it. The other part of it, the other main reason people usually do this is because they want to track their tasks. This is actually where I started when I started using my bullet journal. I wasn't as interested in tracking my time that I was you know, working or doing things, but I had to think, get things done. I had to get, you know, multiple things in a day done and I kept forgetting them. And that frustrated me because I had a whole list of things I had to do and I had to keep track of and everything was so overwhelming. So is it task tracking that you're doing primarily? Then get a system that works with task tracking. But I truly believe that when you start out, choose one of these two things to do. If you have three kids that need to be at different places at different times and you have your own work times and your partner's working times and you have travel times and all the other things, you need to do grocery shopping and you, you, you do yoga or you know rock climbing or whatever, you need to keep that all together, then I'd say start using time tracking. Even if you don't have any kids, you're on your own without a partner and you just have a cat who sleeps around most of the day. Um, but you have to make sure that you're putting in, I don't know, 40 hours of study time a week because you're a med student or something. Even then, time tracking may be your best idea to get started. On the other hand, if, like me, a lot of your tasks are not time related, uh, you have no idea how much time something's gonna take, and you have no idea how, um, uh, you, you have very little time restraint, then task tracking may be the way to start. Task tracking is easy when you know, in a day I have to put a round of laundry through, I have to uh, vacuum and I have to make sure that I'm, you know, I've, I've done my finances or I've, um, I've sent a review copies to my readers, things like that. Um, some of these things you won't exactly know how much time it's going to take, but they need to get them today. So. Task tracking is useful when your most of your important things are task related, not time related. And I believe if you want to build this habit, you're going to have to choose between one of the two. Doing them both at the same time is likely to get you overwhelmed. And when you're just starting out with a planner, you do not want to be overwhelmed because that makes you stop using a planner. Being overwhelmed is the number one reason people stop using planners. Even systems that may work for them, but that they, you know, dove in too quickly or otherwise um, actually set themselves up for failure. Which now brings me to the third point. You need a system that you can adapt. Like I said, start using one of them and get them to a point where you can actually trust that what's on it is what's important. So the first thing you're gonna wanna look at is what worked. Even from other systems you've used in the past, what are the things that worked for you? And as you use your own system, keep asking yourself this question. My weekly spreads, and I'll make a video of it at some point, um, or you can 
probably yeah you can find them on my blog I'll link the blog somewhere um, because I've shown previous weekly spreads um, as I was adapting things and going through things um, my weekly spreads have um, changed a lot over time and um, those are one of those things that I used that I adapted as I realized what worked and what didn't work at the same time I, I'm also still using a lot of the bullet journals key features um, like moving tasks forward moving tasks back um, and being able to do that on the go as I'm working even though I now use a hobonichi for my daily work so I kept things that are that worked and I dropped things that didn't um, one of the ways to adapt, adapt is try new things and when I'm saying that I don't mean try five new things every month but I do say for example uh, for most of 2016 I've used habit trackers um, which is basically a page where for every day of the month you track if you've done something have I had enough water to drink or did I brush my teeth every day did I go for a run did I work out anything like that you can track by most people just color in uh, little squares every day or there's other more pretty ways to do it but it's that, those are my practical I've used that for basically all of 2016 I still use similar ways in my work planner at the moment but they go on a weekly base throughout the year um, habit trackers worked for me that was something I'd never used before and that was one of the things that really worked that I really enjoyed new things that didn't work as well for me um, I've at multiple points tried to participate in um, uh, uh, plan with no not plan with me um, monthly planning Instagram thingies and um, drawing and art thingies and they never work for me I keep trying and I keep failing at them so I'll post when I see something fun or when I do something fun I don't use them anymore um, you know try new things try something that may be an improvement that may be something totally different from what you did before but if you have a system that can adapt where you're adapting weekly or monthly this means that new things only last you a week if it doesn't work well it's a week if your monthly thing doesn't work well it's a month you can even you know go back to an old system if possible if your planner allows for it you can go back to an old system it doesn't mean you have to stick with it for the rest of your life what doesn't work drop it but stick to what works this is so important stick to what works it's one of the most important things not everything will work for everyone but if something's working for you you can adapt it somewhat you can you know change it slightly but if you want to keep going if you want to stick to your system if you want to trust your system then stick to the things that work I need a weekly overview of my things I need a weekly overview of my time I need a daily overview of my time and I need a daily list of th tasks that I need to do those are things that work for me and those are things that have stuck with me throughout the last two years of me actually really going into planning I would like to end this video on a um, a, a more productive or a you know go get them uh, kind of note um, for people who are let's just split this up in the middle for people who are time tracking I would advise to um, find something that has uh, not the layouts in the in a planner that basically go you know Monday Tuesday Wednesday 
Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, because that that doesn't give you the best visual of what's actually going on. What you want is um, something where all your days are What you want is something where all your days are vertically um, and have time ladders. So you can um, put your own time blocks where you need them and even other people's time blocks. Digitally, you can do this in, um, in Google Calendar. At least that's the one I know most about. Um, in paper form, I personally use Passion Planner, but um, of course, there's the Hobonichi uh, in the weeks, either the week, not the Hobonichi weeks itself. <laughs> the Hobonichi um, original, you're going to need the um, weekly supplement, which uses a system like this. Or you can use the Hobonichi Cousin, as I do, which also has um, these timelines, um, time, yeah, these weekly timelines at the front of the planner. So, um, of course, there's a lot of downloads that you can also use. Um, if, if you Google them, you can probably find them. Um, you're going to need time tracking. Two, you're going to need a timer. You're going to need something that reminds you to leave the house when you have to. Generally, some of us can you know, keep track of that ourselves, but um, I don't always leave the house on time because I'll get caught up in something and then it's suddenly 20 minutes later when I feel it's been a minute. Um, best thing is to have something that a timer or a clock that's easily visible and that you can refer to during the day to make sure you are actually where you're supposed to be or you're doing what you're supposed to be doing. Um, I'll go deeper into time tracking in a different video because there's actually a couple of ways in which you can adapt between the two systems um, uh, to combine them into a system like I use right now. But that's sort of not an intro, that's more of a, you know, intermediate or even a advanced video on planning. The other system, um, the task tracking system, what you're going to need is something that you can make lists. Generally, um, digitally, this means um, I think Evernote does this. Uh, OneNote, eh, potentially, um, but even just a Word document or a Google Doc or anything like that will work digitally, as long as you can, you know, cross stuff off or delete whatever. Make sure that you can keep updating your list. Um, if you're going the whiteboard route, well, that's, you know, a whiteboard and you're going to need pens. And for a um, paper copy route, you're going to need something. Um, you're going to need a notebook and a pen. That's the basics that you need. You can, um, I'd say you can look up the bullet journal system, but don't get discouraged by all the people who have added to it. If you're gonna look at it, start simple. Start with just the basic um, bullet journals uh, guides that uh, are on the website or simple basic bullet journal things. Don't go looking at all the pretty stuff. Not because they're not good, but if you're starting out, that's overwhelming. If you have a brain that easily overwhelms, that's not a good start to your planning. So keep it simple. Um, I personally, my very first, I think two weeks of bullet journaling was in a um, spiral bound book, a spiral bound college block and I used a fountain pen. That was all I used, nothing else. That was my, originally my bullet journal, no, because I had the notebook because I use my notebook for creative uh, things and keeping you know, 
things from my brain into a notebook. Um, so I had the notebook. I um, and I told myself if I was going to stick to the system for two weeks, I was allowed to upgrade to something a little bit more expensive. And that's what I did after two weeks. I upgraded and I used the bullet journal system for all of 2016. Um, in this case, well, I don't have much else to put on this list, to be honest. Uh, I'll just put the, the bullet journal system on it, which you can look at. Um, but apart from that, the task tracking, yeah, that, that's okay. Apart from that, task tracking can be done really simply. Time tracking will, you know, take a little bit more time, but it's a different use. Task tracking can be done in a throwaway, small, even on a small piece of paper and a pen, you're gonna need it. Um, you don't need expensive stuff to start doing this. And you're not gonna, you're generally not gonna get a really long list of tasks each day. My, I just looked at my first couple of days of bullet journaling and I started out with days where I had four tasks originally. Throughout the day, I added five more that I then immediately crossed off because I'd done them. Uh, but a lot of days started with me just having four tasks that I had to complete in a day. Now, when I start my day, I generally have six, seven tasks set up already, but that's because I've got a system going. But when I started out doing the task tracking, I only had a handful of tasks and I didn't even always complete them. Sometimes days got away from me and that happens too. And you need to be kind to yourself and you need to Except that not all days are going to be super productive or even that a task that you planned on a day may as well be much better done a totally different day or you're not going to get to it or you'd overplanned even with four tasks there's a chance to overplan yourself if your four tasks are you know fold all the laundry of the last three weeks uh, do my finances for the last six months and do dishes for the last two weeks and I don't know, go for a 20 minute or 40 minute run. Just four tasks, but I can bet probably just two of those are going to get done and the run's gonna go out first. You know, even with four tasks, you have the potential of over planning yourself. So be honest with yourself and stick to the things that work. So going just way back, intro into planning. One, trust your system. This requires you putting your um, system into work, but it also requires your system to be filled with whatever you need to be doing. This is a two way street. If you're not putting anything into your system, you can't trust your system to remind you of things. So trust your system by using it. Two, create the habit. Create the habit of using your planner and um, create this habit small. Don't go all out on anything immediately. Start really small. Just create the habit of when something pops into your head, write it down to do later or if you're time tracking if it if you're getting an appointment or something that you need to block time out for do it don't wait and don't trust that your brain will remember something when you know you're likely to forget it three adapt your system as needed to your needs as they come along or as needed to your um uh, as you learn about your system and you learn the things that work well and that don't work, adapt your system to your needs. 
and make sure that those need that, that the system doesn't break the trust that you have in it and that was the video i hope this was helpful and um if you like leave a comment like subscribe thank you very much bye